there's only three ways to change your input level in Pro Tools. Hey, man, are you ready to record in Pro Tools for the first time ever? Well, you are on the right channel because Wavy Wayne's here to help. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the channel. I suppose this might be your first time to the channel, and if it is, welcome. Because this channel is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster. Today is no different. Actually, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. It's all about helping you how to record in Pro Tools, man. Pro Tools, a professional DAW, digital audio workstation, can be a little daunting when we getting started. So I just want to walk you out through the opening dashboard, kind of show you some open and starting parameters, get you set up with getting input into your first audio track and how to actually start recording. So here we go. When you first launch Pro Tools by clicking on the uh, Pro Tools icon or whatever you use, if you're on a Mac or PC, it might be a little differently you're going to be confronted with the dashboard. Now, the dashboard is where you make all of the decisions about the session that you're about to create. Yeah, that's what we call projects or documents and Pro Tools. We call it a, a session, okay? So at the top, you see you can name your session. Super important. Let's just go ahead and name this my first session. Always make sure that you are naming your session. And then I'm going to take a second here to also jump down to the bottom here because another important thing, not only do we want to make sure that we're naming our sessions, but that we're choosing a proper location to save those sessions, all right? Um, I definitely recommend that everybody out there use an external hard drive. So if you have an external hard drive, preferably a solid state hard drive or something that's really fast, um, have it connected to your computer and then go down and ch always leave this little checkbox checked because every session that I record, I want to save it somewhere slightly different. Every client, I'm going to put them a new folder, say, hey, this is uh, Wayne's folder. This is Jay's folder. This is Lydia's folder. And so every client is going to have their own separate folder. So I like to leave that prompt for location set on. But if you have somewhere that you want to just save every session, you could automatically just hit this little checkbox on the location, choose whatever designated location, and that will always be selected as long as that drive or location is available whenever you start your Pro 2 session. Cool. So we got our name of the session. Once we are finished configuring the parameters of our session, Pro 2 will prompt us to choose a location for saving it, which I prefer, so we can do that later. Now, there's a few types of different sessions and projects that we can create. You can choose a local storage session. Again, that means it's going to be stored on either the hard drive that's inside your computer or an external hard drive that you have connected. If you want to collaborate with people or possibly even save this session onto a uh, to the cloud, the Avid cloud, then you would choose this next option, which we can dive into on another video. But this is going to be basic setting up to record but there is a cloud option that allows you to back up your session to the cloud and make it accessible for other people to log in and use that session remotely you can also create a session from a template pro tools provides some dope templates i also have some really great custom templates on my website wavywayne.com now a template will just be a session that opens up it'll already have some tracks ready to use for you it'll have some effects uh ready to use and kind of already have a sound um, for some of the templates depending on the style that you're working on so uh, what we're going to do actually though we're just going to create a local session on our local storage all right now we're going to drop down here to the file type this is where we choose all our different parameters so we got file type bit depth sample rate and we have the io settings that we can choose for the session that we're going to create File type, there's only two types of files that you can actually work with in Pro Tools. They don't sound any better or worse than one another. The default is the BWF WAV format. So let's just keep it there. It is not going to make a difference in what your audio sounds like. So just keep it at the default. Sample rate. Now, a <laughs> long story short, sample rate referred to... Think about it as frame rate when you're working with a video where the higher the frame rate is, the more frames or more samples you're capturing in this uh, particular setting of your audio, the higher the resolution is going to be. So a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz, meaning that means that my A to D converter, my analog to digital converter at my audio interface is sampling the incoming audio signal 44,100 times per second and then redrawing or recreating that 
audio signal digitally with the information that is captured by sampling it 44,100 times per second. Now, obviously, Pro Tools can go all the way up to 192,000 uh, hertz. That means 192,000 samples of that audio per second. The resolution is going to be a lot higher, but also the file size is going to be a lot, lot larger. So there's no need to go there. My recommended uh, settings for basic recording is going to be a 48 kilohertz sample rate. When it comes to bit depth, this is where you're going to get your amplitude resolution. Um, for the best bit depth, uh, let's just go with 24-bit. That's going to give us a nice um, amplitude resolution for our session. The next thing is the I.O. settings. In this case, I always just recommend stereo mix for you guys. I.O. settings basically just means the input and output settings. That's what I and O stands for. By choosing stereo mix, Pro Tools is going to analyze whichever uh, hardware you're using as your interface, and then it will assign input and output paths based on what's available on your hardware, okay? So now that we have that set up, we can pretty much just go ahead and hit create. And then we can choose a spot to save our session. All right, I'll just save it in my documents, hit save. And here is my very first Pro Tools session. Now, a couple of things that you might want to consider, and you could even do this before even reaching that dashboard. First, before we start doing anything, let's go up to the setup menu and choose playback engine. Now, this is where we're going to choose which hardware we're using for this session. Again, you could have went on ahead and, and chose this uh, before that dashboard screen, you could have closed it out. But in case um, your, your hardware is not connected, we just want to double check here to make sure that everything is right. So the playback engine, make sure that whatever audio interface that you have connected that you want to be recording through, that you have that selected as your playback engine. Next, we're going to come down to the hardware buffer size. The hardware buffer size basically determines how much information is being processed by your computer at one time. If we have the hardware buffer size set very high, up to 1,024 samples or higher, your uh, your artist will incur latency, right? You're going to hear latency, which is the time it takes for them to basically speak into the microphone, the computer to process that information and then spit it back out into the headphones, there will be a time delay between that because the computer is processing so much information. To minimize the amount of latency that we experience while we're recording, we want to set the hardware buffer size to be as low as possible. I find that uh, about 128 samples is generally perfect um, to reduce the latency, but also give your computer enough processing power to handle whatever tasks it needs to handle um, during the session. So um, again, I have a whole lot more in-depth information about the hardware buffer size and latency on my channel. But if you want a more structured education, my Pro Tools certification course will get you there. It'll teach you everything that you need to know about setting up your session professionally and all of the different controls to get the best um, optimized workflow for you. So now that we have those two things out of the way, just go ahead and hit OK. And what I want to do is create an audio track. So I'm imagining that we're going to be recording audio. And uh, of course, you would have had to take some other steps to make sure that you also have your microphone connected and whether it needs any phantom power or anything like that. But assuming that you, you've already covered that part, now that we're in Pro Tools, let's go ahead and make a new audio track to do that. Pro Tools is pretty simple with the menu naming system. So we can go right up to the top menu and choose the track menu and choose new. Okay. Once you join my Pro Tools certification course, we'll learn all kinds of shortcuts to uh, create new tracks a whole lot faster than this. But new tracks menu, mono, audio track, and samples. You can name it. You can name it uh, vocal, whatever you want to name it here. We'll hit create. Now, Let's just go over to our mix window real quick to jump over to the mix window again. Pro Tools uh, menu system is it's kind of easy to learn if you know what you're looking for. I want to go to a different window, so I'm going to go up to the window menu and I'm going to choose mix. Now that I'm in my window menu, I can see my, my full track. We have inserts, we have sends on the track, but what we're going to focus on right now is the I.O. section of the track. I.O. again stands for inputs and outputs. The input paths are at the top. The output paths are at the bottom. Now, you want to make sure that the input path for the new audio track that you just created 
is the same or matches whatever uh, input that you plugged your microphone into. So I plug my microphone into input one. So I want to make sure that this track that I plan to record on is receiving input from input one. As far as the output, the output is going to be my main stereo output, whichever leads the outputs of my interface, either to my headphones or my studio monitors, uh, depending on how my workflow is set up. Now, of course, in my Pro 2 certification course, we'll learn all about the I.O. setups and learn how to customize the inputs and outputs and bus paths of our session. But for now, just know a very basic. As long as you have the appropriate interface set up and you chose stereo mix at the uh, beginning in the dashboard, then you will have some options here that correspond with the hardware that you're using. So now that I have my uh, appropriate input and output set up, I want to go ahead and start to um, set my level. So what I would do, um, just so I don't hear this too, let me mute myself. I can record and enable my track. It says mute that. And now that my track is uh, being record enabled, Basically, I can use my preamp to set my level, and I will give y'all a little hint here. There's only three ways to change your input level in Pro Tools. That is to change the preamp on your actual interface or if you have a, an external preamp. So changing the preamp, moving the microphone closer or further away from the source can change that level, and also uh, changing the source volume itself. So if I was recording like a keyboard or something that had a volume knob, I could turn that up or down as well. Nothing inside the Pro 2 software is actually going to change my signal input level. Something super important to remember that moving this fader up or down or anything is only going to change the output level of that track. It's not going to change the level at which I'm actually recording to on that track. So once I get a good strong uh, signal level, and for me, a good strong signal level is a level that peaks um, kind of on average between negative uh, six and negative uh, 12. So as long as you are somewhere between negative six, negative 12 type of range, that's going to be a good signal uh, level for you to, to start working with and start recording. You definitely want to give yourself enough headroom so that you're not peaking and you definitely don't want to be too quiet either. Once you have record enabled your track, here's a couple of different ways that you could start to record. We could open up the transport window by going up to the window menu and choosing transport and this little floating window will pop up. You could hit this uh, record ready button. And now once our track is record enabled, our session is record ready. You can hit play or just hit the space bar and your session will start recording. Now, of course, there are some shortcuts to start recording without first entering the record ready. Um, if you have your track record enabled, you could just hit command space bar. You could also hit numeric three or F12 on your keyboard as well. All three of those are shortcuts to start recording without having to first enter the record ready mode in the transport. After you've done with your first recording, simply just click the record enable button again to take the track off of record enable so you don't risk recording over anything. Hit the play button to listen back to what you've recorded. Hi, Pro Tools users. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. I hope you have found this helpful in getting started with recording for the first time or maybe the second time in Pro Tools, man. Again, I have a full Pro Tools certification course that is enrolling right now. It's going to help you no matter if you've never opened Pro Tools or you've been using it already for 20 years. It's going to help you learn the ins and outs of this program so you can stop thinking and guessing about the tools and just use them effortlessly. All right. Check out the website. All of the details are down in the description below. Y'all be dope.